All right, let's work through this definite integral problem together. We want to find a value of the integral of 1 divided by 1 plus x squared, where x goes from minus 2 to 3. The basic strategy is to use substitution, and the substitution we choose is x equals the tangent of theta. But before we start doing calculations, we must not forget to decide the range of theta. We want theta to run through a continuous interval in which the tangent function takes all real values. So the best choice is to let theta stay strictly between minus 1 half pi and plus 1 half pi. Next, we differentiate. When x equals the tangent of theta, the differential of x becomes 1 divided by the cosine of theta squared, multiplied by the differential of theta. Now comes the part that many people struggle with, changing the integration limits. As x moves from minus 2 to 3, what happens to theta? To keep things clear, let's introduce two temporary names. When x equals minus 2, let theta be alpha. When x equals 3, let theta be beta. So theta will move from alpha to beta. These alpha and beta satisfy two conditions. The tangent of alpha equals minus 2, and the tangent of beta equals 3. Both alpha and beta lie strictly between minus 1 half pi and plus 1 half pi, because that is the interval we chose for theta. On top of that, the tangent function is increasing on this interval, so we know alpha is less than beta. Let's call this fact statement number one. Without keeping this in mind, the problem cannot be solved correctly. Now we are ready to transform the integral. The original integral becomes the integral from alpha to beta of one divided by one plus the tangent of theta squared multiplied by one divided by the cosine of theta squared with respect to theta. Here we use the well-known identity from trigonometry. 1 plus the tangent of theta squared is exactly equal to 1 divided by the cosine of theta squared. This makes the entire integrand equal to 1. So the integral becomes incredibly simple. Its value is just beta minus alpha. But we are not done because we must compute the actual number beta minus alpha. To do that, we use the addition formula for the tangent function. The tangent of beta minus alpha is equal to the tangent of beta minus the tangent of alpha divided by one plus the product of the tangent of alpha and the tangent of beta. Now we substitute the values we know. The tangent of alpha is minus two and the tangent of beta is three. Carrying out the calculation, we get minus one. So now we know that the tangent of beta minus alpha equals minus one. Next, go back to statement number one. Alpha and beta are both strictly between minus one half pi and plus one half pi. So their difference is positive and less than pi. This means beta minus alpha must lie somewhere between zero and pi. Within that interval, the angle whose tangent is minus one is uniquely determined. It must be 3 fourths pi. Therefore, beta minus alpha equals 3 fourths pi. And this value is exactly the value of the definite integral.